everyone, this is Tim here at InstaCluster. Welcome to another episode of InstaBlinks. Today, I am joined by InstaCluster product manager, Tom Griffiths. Tom, thanks for joining me. G'day, Tim, it's a pleasure. Now, Tom, um, I've got you here today to talk about Redis. Uh, can you first give me a little bit of background before we get into the, to the depths of this? Can you give me a bit of background as to your past experience and a bit about your role in InstaCluster? Uh, I joined InstaCluster in April 2020. Um, I'm leading the Redis effort. We've released a product, InstaCluster for Redis, and Redis is a really fast in-memory database. Fantastic. And so I know that Redis has been around a long time and has been widely adopted by all types of different small, medium, large enterprises. Um, can you tell me a little bit about why Redis has been so popular in the market to date? It's got major adoption across the industry uh, with Twitter through to Stripe uh, and lots of other smaller companies. And the key reason why you find people adopting in-memory databases is that the latency is a really important element in any kind of transaction. And it uh, correlates with many business KPIs like shopping cart abandonment, uh, engagement, uh, and even fun. And so people's revenue is really affected by how fast they can do things. So in-memory databases that are really fast, obviously, um, are great for this kind of thing. Fantastic. And so, so obviously Redis exists like any other company in a, in a competitive marketplace. What are some of the top kind of competitors that spring to mind when you think of in-memory database? And in your view, what differentiates Redis and what makes it uh, advantageous over others in the market? Redis was actually originally released as an open source project by one individual, Anti-Res, as he goes by online in uh, 2009. And um, he released it under the BSD license and it gained a lot of popularity. And so um, you have a company that behind, that's behind it now that owns the trademark, but uh, many other people offer it and versions of it. And our managed service competes among that, uh, that group of, of companies. And in terms of the market of for in-memory databases, there are a couple of others, but Redis is head and shoulders above the rest in terms of um, being loved by developers and and with its market share and mind share. Mm -hmm. What puts it head and, head and shoulders above the others in the market? Well, if you look at sort of um, quote unquote second place, you've got something like Memcached, which is a key value store. You can store data into the memory of um, a cluster of, of machines, mm -hmm. but it only does that. Whereas Redis has very much expanded uh, into many other things. Sometimes it's called a data structure server. And so not only does it have key values, it has hashes or dictionaries, um, counts, and a whole heap of other things that allow developers to use their native data st structures that they're using in any language, be it Java, be it Python, and they can very quickly store that into Redis uh, and then retrieve it in another language from another server even. And so you've got this um, elegant way of having a pool of data structures that are shared between services, servers, microservices, and, and the like. Certainly, I guess with, with broader use cases brings um, you know, a, lot, a lot greater adoption from different, uh, you know, different industries. Um, but traditionally, you know, what I've understood about Redis is that it's particularly useful and, and is very widely adopted, especially around e-commerce uh, platforms that rely on speed, right? I mean, is that a, an accurate kind of representation of, of where its main market is? Or where do you see the, the main adoption, um, you know, in, in today's industry? It's definitely the case that um, close to the application layer, it can provide that speed. And there's a vast body of evidence that we've seen from sort of Silicon Valley and now sort of distributing through many other companies that you, with 100 milliseconds of extra latency, you can lose 1% of your revenue. So at scale, we've seen that again and again across Amazon, across Shopify, across a number of things, uh, studies done by Akamai, there's uh, uh, a lot of evidence to show that you need to be fast or you lose revenue. Mm. And so, okay, say compared to the 100 millisecond latency that you might see from a, a more traditional stack, what, what kind of numbers would people expect to see from a, a well-designed deployment? Well, Redis is going to your main memory, your RAM, and so you're looking on the order of, you know, 100 nanoseconds for something to access something of RAM. Uh, and so it can often deliver you results well under a millisecond. 
uh, when other databases might take, be taking 22 milliseconds or more. And then you've got multiple queries that you might be making to those databases. And so Redis can very uh, quickly provide you with multiple results, somebody's shopping cart, their username, their cookie, uh, all under a millisecond, whereas another database might be slowing you down significantly. With the sort of broad adoption, obviously um, having developers uh, you know, especially with an open source project like Redis, having developers adopt it and, and love it is a, is a massive part of it, its success. So we've seen over the last, you know, five, 10 years that it's consistently been voted, as you said, as, as one of the most loved database technologies by developers. Can you maybe give us a, a few reasons, I, I guess the, the key things you see is why developers love this so much? Yeah, uh, Stack Overflow does a huge survey of developers every year. In the last four years, Redis has been the number one most loved database technology. And when you dig down into how that question is asked, it's what are you using now that you are planning to use again? That's mm -hmm. how they define love. And Redis is far and away uh, number one. And I think the most attractive thing about Redis is that you are using the native data structures that you would use in your programming. And so you don't have to sort of translate to some other layer through SQL or the like. You just, if the username is a string, it's a string in Redis. And so your application just passes it back almost transparently. And so you get this sort of pool of memory data structures across all of your machines, across all of your services, which doesn't need any translation. It's just there, it's available, it's fast. And I think that's why developers love it so much. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm assuming that you know, ease of use has, has kind of been a trademark of, of Redis up until, you know, up until today. But I, you know, from the very virtue of, of InstaCluster and the like, offering it as a managed service also implies a level of complexity when you go into this clustering mode. So um, could you share maybe a little bit of details about what kind of challenges, uh, you know, users should expect with this kind of usage? Yeah, when you're deploying it, there's many things that you've got to do. You've got to think about how you're going to, um, persist to disk, you got to think about uh, how you're going to manage the sort of delicate memory settings in its interrelationship with the operating system, uh, how you're going to deploy uh, these assisting sort of IO threads. And you've also got to think about your cluster architecture, how you're going to deploy your cluster, and then all things like backup. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it makes sense. Um, and, and so I guess back in my day when I first started in the sort of hosting world, an easy way that I, you know, was sort of taught to believe about accelerating kind of content delivery and, um, and boosting page load times was through leveraging a CDN like Akamai's. Um, so is there a fundamental difference here in, in the way that Redis acts versus say a traditional CDN? Are they completely different use cases or are they kind of used interchangeably? By and large, they're different. So uh, CDN will help you get uh, static assets like images or JavaScript and other things close to your users and, and deliver to them quickly. Whereas Redis uh, is m very much the kind of live things like somebody's shopping cart contents or their um, user session. And so in that way, Redis is, is quite different to a CDN. I got it. And, and in terms of how you're seeing Redis being adopted, say, I guess, what would be the, the biggest differences to, to, to how people are using Redis today and the use cases that you're seeing as, as the most prevalent, as opposed to in the earlier adoption days of, you know, um, you know from 2009 onwards? Yeah, over its history, uh, Redis has had a whole heap of new features added to it. Mm. And uh, chief among those are its stream processing capabilities. So people in the past, when they didn't want to block on an action, uh, they might have put something onto just a, a list, a queue. And um, now Redis has a very robust stream processing capability, uh, which is actually modeled on Apache Kafka, one of our other products. Yeah. And um, it can sort of detect when a consumer has failed to do a task and then somebody else can take it up and complete it. And so it's very robust. Okay. And, and, and for layman's like me uh, who don't understand stream processing, get, have you, can you give a sort of a live example of where we might see this in action? 
Well, for example, a user might upload their picture to a social network and the uh, you wouldn't want the web application to just stall at that point while it's making a thumbnail. So it would get put onto a processing queue to be made into a thumbnail and then the user could just see a spinner or a, a loading sort of notification and then the thumbnail, once it's processed, could come back into that user interface. And that's what we mean when we say non-blocking. Um, and so Redis is there close to the application layer, making sure that everything's sort of really fast. And, and in terms of in terms of where it, the, the potential overlaps, I mean, do you see as, uh, I guess, when you look at Kafka and, and Redis as, you know, serving fundamentally different uh, functions, but where would you use, say, Kafka over Redis when you're looking at stream processing and, and that sort of functionality? Kafka is very much targeted at enterprise stream processing and message passing. And so we see it adopted by, I think, 80% of the Fortune 100 mm. and across a number of different industries, financial industry and so forth. So it's, it's got a certain level of robustness that uh, Redis doesn't quite have. The other advantage of Kafka is that it has a whole connector ecosystem in the Kafka Connect and can integrate with a whole series of enterprise products. Yeah. Whereas we see Redis as well, still very robust, probably not appropriate for those use cases probably closer to the application layer where it's speeding up user experiences. Yeah. That said, Redis is still uh, incredibly robust and can be used as a message passing and stream processing system uh, for many applications, particularly when it is deployed uh, in a cluster with replicas that can take over from masters in a very robust way. Interesting. Um, and, and so I guess with, with all the things that Redis are good at, um, you mentioned there that sometimes it's not the best use case. Are there any sort of anti-patterns that you would want to caution users against or are there any sort of bad use cases that you've seen kind of go horribly wrong or yeah, what, what's your, your view on, on the bad uses of Redis? Some people want to use Redis as their only database and right. you can do that. Um, you can actually configure it to persist to disk on every write, uh, of course, your performance will lower, but we find that we would recommend in most use cases where the data is of a high importance, that that wouldn't be uh, an architectural decision that's very wise. However, if your data is slightly more ephemeral, that can be a perfectly good way to use Redis as your main database. Well, it's always good to have a buyer beware. But look, it's been a, a really fascinating talk, Tom, and thanks so much for joining me. I've got a lot of uh, lot better understanding of, of what I did uh, five minutes ago. So <laughs> thank you very much for, for coming on board and um, look forward to having you on again soon. Thanks, Tim. My pleasure. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. If you are keen to try out Instaclus's new Redis offering, do get in touch. We're here to help you and, and work out um, you know, best use cases and uh, help you get into production more smoothly. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, Please yeah, get in touch if, if you found this interesting. And remember, the golden rule, always be clustering.